Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I'm Gary Gunderson. Today, I may be stretching the definition of gear here a bit, but as the idiom says, an army marches on its stomach. So we're going to make some hardtack. Hardtack, or variants thereof, with all sorts of names, have been used for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. There were sea biscuits feeding sailors on months-long voyages across the oceans, Roman legionnaires marching with Buccellatum in their endless conquests, though it is most commonly known today as the ration issued to American Civil War soldiers. In a time before pasturation and proper food storage, the most important thing for feeding large groups of people on the move was to dehydrate the food as much as possible for easy transportation and storage so it would not spoil. Thus, just about every kitchen can make hardtack as the ingredients are simple. Flour, salt, and water. And even the salt is arguable if you're in a pinch. This recipe makes about a dozen or so pieces, so you can factor up or down depending on your preference. There are endless variations of this recipe that you can find online, but they are all pretty similar. I think it works best if you cook low and slow, like in an edible brisket, so give yourself some time if you're going to take this on. First, set your oven to 250 degrees. Then you need two cups of flour, half a tablespoon of salt, some like a little bit more salt too. Mix the flour and salt together. Start out with the half cup of water and slowly pour it in, mixing while you go. It's important to remember the goal here is to create something as dry as possible, yet still a form of dough. So you want to put in the minimum amount of water necessary to bind it together. Like, really question yourself if you have enough water. Get to the point where you think, surely I need more. This is barely holding together. That's the proper mindset. Once you reach that point and you have pretty much everything held together, you're probably there. As you are kneading it together, you can feel out the spots that are still wet. Work in the excess mixture into those spots so it all adheres together. At this stage, if you add too much water, you can always add more flour and salt to even it out, or even just increase the cook time. The important thing is to make this as dry as possible. The next step is to flatten it out into as large of a square as you can manage. Throw down a little more flour first to help dehydrate it even more and keep it from sticking. You want a thickness between a third of an inch and a half an inch. And this is definitely one of my weak points, as you can see. Uh, I make no excuses here, but this is genuinely one of the worst jobs I've done. So, whatever. Next, take a knife or a pizza cutter and cut it into squares. 3 inches by 3 inches, or 2 inches by 3 inches. You can be more precise, especially for long-term storage, but I'm just going to eat these on a camping trip coming up, so I'm not too concerned if they look a little janky. These leftovers along the edges here, you re-roll it into other squares, and you usually get one or two more pieces out of it. Sometimes you have to add more water to get to actually come together again into a solid piece. Like I said though, this is why it's important to try and get as square as possible the first time around because these re-rolled ones never seem to be quite right. They just do not come out as good as the initial batch. Let's just say if this was my baby and I was a Spartan, it'd be rolling down the mountain. Okay, now that you have your squares cut, you need to dock them, which is to add the holes to make sure these don't rise as they cook and they can properly release the steam so all that pesky water can escape. For this part, you can use a chopstick, a dowel rod, a pin cap, or a nice Rosalie bayonet for a LaBelle rifle. Just make sure it's clean of all hun blood first. And don't just poke it, push it all the way down. You want 16 evenly spaced holes per piece, and this is my first time using the bayonet for this portion, so we can call this close enough. Then you throw it in the oven for <laughs> four hours, minimum. After the first two, take them out and flip them over. When you pull them out, they should make a distinctive sound when you smack them together. 
That's how you know they're done. You should let them cool to at least room temperature before storage or eating. If you bleed a little, that's how you know it's good. So what's the purpose of this? Why would someone in the modern era make these hard crackers that may even hurt your teeth when you are eating them? Well, they have lots of uses. The obvious advantages are the same reasons that this became a staple over generations. It's easy to move around and won't go bad if you're looking at long-term storage. Throw it in a sealed container and maybe throw in a desiccant pack and you can store it practically forever and it won't go bad. Or at least it won't get much worse than how it starts out. But if you're not a weirdo like me, you may not want to eat them just plain. Thankfully, there are plenty of ways to eat hardtack that make them a little more palatable. You can dip them in coffee or milk to soften them up. You can crush them up and put them in a soup. You can spread jam or butter on them to add flavor. You can dip it in buttermilk, fry it up in a skillet with some butter or grease, and make a hardtack pancake. I've even read you can grind it back into powder and reuse it as a flour for other recipes, though I've never tried that. And there are other practical uses too. You can make it into a picture frame. You can keep it as a souvenir. You can stabilize a wobbly table. You can throw it like a frisbee. They really can do just about anything. There are some modern recipes trying to make them soft or taste good. This usually means adding ingredients that make them easier to spoil, reducing the shelf life. You can try things like butter, sugar, cinnamon, or honey to change the taste. I've actually tried all these at one time or another, and I personally thought the one with added honey tasted the best. All of these negate the long-term storage ability, which is the primary reason to make hardtack. If you want something tasty that you're going to eat right away, there are a lot better options. Anyways, that's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel as I have a lot more content planned. Does anyone else like eating hardtack for fun? If you use this recipe, let me know what you think of it, or if you have a different hardtack recipe you think is superior, leave it below in the comments.